Hey traders, this is Palmer from Bank the Trade. It is Sunday, September 5th, 2021. College football season has kicked off. Roll Tide and the NFL is going to be kicking off soon as well. It was a busy week in the markets last week. Um, if some of you don't know me or who I am, I am a moderator with several other phenomenal traders in here. Uh, one in particular, AJ Trader 7, AJ, and Awesome Calls Trading. It is a fantastic room to talk and trade stocks and build your trading knowledge of what moves stocks and how to trade them. And we had, there were, there were some people in the room last week, and it, it says a lot about these people. They have, they have small accounts, $500 accounts, and they're in awesome calls. And the fact they are small account holders, uh, and they're in this room, it says a huge amount about those people that are in this room, small accounts, wanting to learn. And there are people in this room that don't even have accounts yet, but they're here to pick up the knowledge. And when they're ready, they're going to fund an account. And small account holders, they had a couple questions last week. You know, what can I do or how can I trade a small account? And can I do that in this room or trading other stocks? And the answer is, of course you can. Um, but... Now, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. That's not what I do. I pretty much just talk stocks in my feed. Occasionally, we kick stuff around, but we, you know, we take this stuff uh, very seriously. All right. And as far as trading with a small account goes, that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Um, so there are a number of ways that you can do this. With a small account, say $500. Um, you can't have a margin account. I think the minimum for most brokerages is about two or three thousand dollars. So that if you have five hundred bucks, what are you going to do with it? All right, I'm not here to tell you that you can turn five hundred dollars into five thousand dollars in one month. All right, I'm here to tell you that you can turn five hundred dollars into six or seven hundred dollars in one month or so. Okay, um, you can do that with options. Or you can do that following very low priced stocks. And if you're not familiar with options, I suggest there's a, a boatload of information out there about how to trade them, um, you know, how to price them, what they are. I have a video here on YouTube. It is uh, day trading options, and it's gotten about 800 reviews, a few thumbs up. And it's got a lot of information about how they move. It uses higher price stocks, but the way the option moves is if it's a $700 stock, if it's a $20 stock, the premiums, the delta, what to watch for, what to look for, the information applies across the board. Okay, so here is the, you can freeze it, take a screenshot, or just search Bank the Trade on YouTube. Day trading options. The video was put out in uh, March of this year and it's gotten some good likes on it. All right, so what we're going to do, I'm going to talk about, you know, what are your options for that small account? Now, if you trade options or if you trade a cash account and you trade options, the option premiums, you know, that trade settles the next day. So let's say we have, you have a $500 account. All right, you're, you can't day trade. You, you've got three trades to make for five days. All right, if you're a pattern day trader, you've got over 25 grand in your account. You're trading 10 times a day. All right, you can only make three trades in a five-day market period. All right, if you have a cash account, say you have $500, and you use $100 of that to make an option trade, that leaves you with $400. All right, that money is used up. Doing easy math here. So you have $400 left. All right, you can make another trade with another $100. Say that premium was exactly $100. Now you have $300 left. And say you were done trading. All right, 
So the next day, that cash settles back into your account. All right, so if it costs you $100 for two trades, that's $200, and your cash balance, your usable cash balance that you have left to trade with is $300. Say you broke even on those option trades. That $100 gets back into your account as usable money the next day. So now you're back to $500. You can make as many option trades as you want to with that $500 as for as long as you don't use up all that $500 cash to make those trades because it's going to settle the next day. So if you have $500, $1,000, you can day trade every day. You can do it with options because the cash settles the next day. Now, slower priced stocks, those take two days to settle. So if you used $100 of that $500, it's not going to settle. And if it was Monday, it's not going to settle till Wednesday where that cash gets back into your account. That usable cash gets back into your account. Very simple math. You can day trade several, a dozen times a week as long as you don't use up your cash in that cycle of days. Okay, so options are a way to do this with a small account, but there's a lot to go over with options. I'm not gonna go over all the option trading because it's a lot of information. Check it out. If you're already familiar with options, this is the way you can do it. If you're not, study up. There's a lot of information out there, all right? But, you know, the fact again, that the fact that you're in options you're in awesome calls with a small account. That says a lot about you, all right? Hopefully, you know, this will get your groove on as far as, you know, how you can trade that small account. All right, and we're gonna talk about trading options and trading some stocks, and in particular, some people to follow about how to help you out or things to look for. All right, but first we're gonna talk about options and some of the stocks that we can trade with options. But first, if we have a $500 account, we need to identify some stocks or potential stocks that we might be able to trade that are lower priced and have a good amount of volume along with a good amount of volume and open interest in the options. What am I talking about in open interest and volume in the options? Read up, watch that video. Okay, you want high open interest, high volume to tighten up the spreads, better fills. All right, so I use a lot of Thinkorswim to find stocks and news events and scans and that sort of thing. So this is a very simple scan that I put together. All right, I have the stock with a max price of $100. I have an option filter in here you add the filter you select options come to open interest with a minimum of 7500 in here and for the stock itself i have a study of an average volume with a 20 like that's like a month moving average of the volume is greater than 2 million shares a day okay and why is that we want stocks that move we want high volume stocks because we want liquidity. It's all about liquidity. And I turned up 500 stocks that fit this category. Now, within these stocks, we see what the prices are. Okay, they're from zero to hundred dollars. And there are, uh, there's bio, there's bio, biotechs in here, oil and gas, there's banks, there's metals, software, tobacco, a conglomeration of all kinds of things in here. All right, so what I would do is try to categorize these. All right, build a watch list by maybe industry. Okay, so if there's a theme that's going on in the markets, if there's a news events that's going on in the markets, if one of these is moving, chances are the other ones are going to get moving also. All right, so find some kind of commonality and your tickers and put them into watch lists and label the watch lists 
hotels and restaurants, label them automobiles, label it airlines, what have you, weed stocks, Bitcoin stocks are good plays, tobacco, health and care and equipment. If something moving, if something is moving, getting a lot of attention, but there's a big play in the market, chances are the other ones might be moving as well. Okay, I do that in general anyways. All right, but back to the options. All right, so we see these stocks. We have our watch list. We're looking for a play. All right, so off the top of my head, I have these. These are labeled by industry. I'm just going to do this by uh, volume, highest to lowest, just to see what's going on here. High liquidity stuff. All right, space has been in the news. All right, that's that's you know, what's his face? Virgin Galactic. AMC has been in the news a lot. Okay. And it's a, it's a $44 stock. Okay. And if we want to look at the options for AMC, here we go. The weekly options, high volume, high open interest, tight spreads. Okay. That's a very volatile stock by volatility. It's got movement, and so the options are very liquid. All right, this one should always be on watch. Now let's look at this. If we have a $500 account, yeah, the options are priced kind of high. It's because the volatility is high in this stock. All right, but it's the movement that we want. They're priced high because of the volatility. Big volume and open interest on these. Okay, so these are the kinds of things that we want to look for. High volume and high open interest. Another one is this uh, LCID, this Lucid. I believe this is Lucid Motors. All right, option premiums. It's a $20 stock. All right, and let's look at the options here. Good open interest, good volume in the weeklies. All right, we want to try to stick with weekly options that have high liquidity. Sometimes there'll be a stock that only has monthly high liquidity uh, with a volume and open interest. We can trade them, but we, we want big numbers in the volume and open interest column. So let's say we have a $500 account. All right. Option premiums, how are they priced? This 0.60 means it's $60. This 2.18 means you're going to pay $218 right here for this option. All right. But say there's a news event, an LCID. All right. And we want to pick up some of these. 20 calls. We buy three of them for $180. And the way you can, it's a quick way to do things. All right, you see the difference in price of the strikes, 19.5 to 20. Let's say the stock goes up to $20.50. By looking at the difference, 19.50 to 20, we see a $19 difference. So just kind of by looking at this option tree and where the dates are, we can figure that if this stock goes up to 2050, my option or each option is going to go up about $20. Okay. We have our deltas here also, but the stock has to go up a full point. All right. It's got to go up to 21 to make a premium increase of $42. Read up on your delta. But let's just say... Looking at this, if it goes up 50 cents, the option is going to go up 20 bucks. All right. You bought three of these for $180. If we get a 50 cent price movement, we're going to make what's three times 20. You're going to make about 60 bucks. So you spent 180 and you're going to turn around and sell them for about 240 because we have to 50 cent price movement, All right? That's a cheap way to look at how these are gonna move. Now, on a $500 account with a, a $60 gain, that's over 10% on a trade. That's fantastic, okay? Don't worry about or thinking that this $60 option that you paid for is gonna go up to $300 today. You're not worried about that. You're worried about making a trade based on some news event or entry that you paid $180 for, and you're going to turn around and sell it for them for 
Okay, you made 60 bucks on a $500 account. That's 10% gain. So there are ways to do this. You don't have to buy three. You can just buy one. And as a matter of fact, that's the way you should do this. Small account, getting your feet wet. What can I do? Small account, you got to start small. All right, you go, go, you go for a, a home run with a $500 account. We're going to thank you for giving us your money. Okay, that's what it comes down to. Because you want to build consistency. Now, I'm not going to get into where you should get in the trade. What does the chart like? I'm, we're talking about your options, how to trade a small account. This is just one example. Lucid Motors, pricing in the options. Now, if you have a smaller account, I would suggest, if you're going to trade options, get them closer to the money per what you can afford because the closer they are to the money for the puts and the calls, the more they're going to move. Yeah, you can buy them way out further away. These are $20, $19 a piece, but you need a very good percentage move to get this moving all the way up here. All right, so try to find and put together a list of stocks that have high volume and high open interest categorize them and see how you know they move during the day now let's take we're going to use last week last week's options all right and we're going to check out how some of these things moved now, I can't pull up the option tree from the previous week, but we can look at the price. And we're going to use this LCID as an example. So here's LCID from Friday. All right, and let's just say it had some kind of news event. All right, if we can find them, these lower price stocks that have the high volume and open interest in the stock and the options, we want, a, if they have a news event, it's going to move them. All right, if there's a lot of people on it, pre-market, a lot of trading, it's going to give us the volatility and the movement that we need, okay, because we want range. And if it's a lower price stock, we really need something to, to push it through, okay, either going up or down with puts or calls. All right, so let's just say the LCID, now I don't think there was news on this, I'm just using this as an example because it's a volatile stock in general. All right, so... Coming into, this is Friday, uh, this was September 3rd. So pre-market, it's not a lot of range here, but it was up like 40 or 50 cents. All right, so let's just say this was a news event. I'm watching the stock or whatever, and it's falling back down here. Let's just say we were looking at the 19 calls, okay, because the stock is around here at $18.70. We want something close because it's a lower price stock because those options that are closer to the money are going to do what? They're going to move more. Of course, we want to be on the right side of it to move for us because if we're on the wrong side, it means it's going to move against us just as fast. All right, so read up on options, things to consider. Again, this is how you can trade a small account. All right, so here's LCID at the open right here. And over here, this is the 19 call option that expired this past Friday on the 3rd. And it opened up at around, we're going to call it 30, $30. Okay, and within about, let's say, 20 minutes of the open, LCID went from where it opened at, it was kind of volatile, it opened at about 19, but it went up to 19.35 in about 15 minutes. All right. And our $19 call option went from $30 to $50 in that same amount of time. That doesn't sound like much. But let me say, let's, let's say it again. It went from $30 to $50. That's a difference of $20. Okay, that's what? A 60 or 70% increase in the premium in about 20 minutes okay small account let's say you bought five of them for $30 you spent 150 bucks you dumped them right at the top for 250 bucks you made a hundred dollars on that trade 
Okay, you bought five of them. They were $30 each for $150. You sold all five of them for about $50 each, which is $250. You bought them for $150. You sold them for $250. You made $100. Your cash account that was $500 is now worth $600. You made a 20% gain on your account in about 10 minutes or 20 minutes. You can do this with a small account. This is just how the options move. You're not going to be able to trade a $20 stock with $500. You can, okay, but you're going to be able to buy 10 or 15 shares or so. But then you're going to have to wait for this cash to settle in two days, and you're going to be doing nothing for two days if you use up all your accounts, all your cash. All right, because you're going to get maybe, what, I can't do the math that quick, 20 shares or so. And you go up 40 points, you're going to make 80 bucks, which is good, but you got to be on the money on these. There's a way to do this, okay, with a small account. Small, You need a small account, you need lower price stock with volatility. Options are going to give you a better return because each option contract controls 100 shares of stock. All right, we're not worried about that here. We're just worried about the price. But this is a way that you can trade a small account. This is just one example with lower price stocks that have good volume and open interest with the options, but you need the movement. Don't trade a stock just for the sake of, oh, I can make a trade or an option, because if a stock is doing this all day, say this was the entire day's chart, there's nothing going on here. All right, and the option is not going to move. You need big moves. All right, and here, this was at 10.15, which is right about here. Watching that same option, let's say 19 was the base. It was support, and you wanted to get into those 19s again at about 10.15, which is here. They went from $20 to $45. So they had over 100% increase in premium when the stock moved from 19 to 40, from $19 to 19.40. Because it moved quick. All right. But you have to have a reason to get in the trade here. This is just after the fact. But this is how the options can move. And this is how you can do it with a small account. These options were $20, $22. You can buy 10 of them for $220. And then you sell 10 of them for $450. And you just made $230. Okay. But you have to have a reason to get in here. All right, this is just an example of how the option premiums move, what you can do with a small account. All right, so this scan right here, there's 426 stocks that fit this criteria. Now, we still, you can't just automatically assume like this, this mile. I have no idea what this is. You can't automatically assume, you can't assume that they're, they're automatically tradable. Okay, because mile is a $5 stock, and the way those options are priced, they're in increments of $2.50 because they're lower priced options. So this is telling you that it's a $5 stock. It's got to have a, what, a 50% move or so just to get the options to move. All right, now some are going to move because there's a lot of volatility, a lot of news on them, but try to push your stock price up to $15, $20 or so, okay? Because a cheaper price stock is going to need a lot of help to move a big range to get your options to move. All right. But Bitcoin stocks like Mara and Riot going to be volatile. Your meme stocks like AMC, Clove might get attention. It's all in the news. All right. Then you have your, your weed stocks like uh, TLRY, CGC, and then you got your EV stocks like NEO and Plug. All right, so try to keep those or these stocks in line with, you know, five bucks might be a long shot trade unless there's news on it. Okay, occasionally the lower price stocks get moved, get moves. Fubo is showing up here. DraftKings, don't be afraid of these. All right, they're going to be volatile. That's what you want. Find something that fits that category like that LCID. Another option for you to trade is the SPY itself. Big liquidity, big volume in these options. All right. 
And this is, uh, these are the ones that are coming up. They're expiring on the 7th, and these expire every, every, every two days. There's, there's different sets of options with the SPY. Every two days, a new tree comes out, so you want to be on the current ones. All right? If it's late in the day of expiration, stay away from them on the day of their expiring if you're three or four points away. Go to the next set. Go to the next tree, because you're going to have less of a probability of those moving. I'd suggest going to the next one or trading them right at the money or in the money. But even these, okay, SPY closed at 453. These options are priced one point away, 40 bucks on the calls. On the put side of things, one point away, about 60 bucks. All right, there's more volatility toward the downside, more people banking or thinking that they might be going down, so they might be priced a little bit higher. All right, so the SPY is a great way to trade with a small account. Okay, but if, it, if, if the stock itself is range bound, if there's a news event coming in, kick back, don't do anything because you got to wait for that news to come out. We need the volatility. Same thing with your regular stocks. All right, have a reason to be able to get in on some of these. All right, but then again, watch that video, look for the particulars for these about why you may not want to trade something like MUX, but you would rather be looking at something like RUN. Okay, even if it's a $45 stock, you could still be able to pick up a handful of options with a $5 or a $500 account, but you still need some kind of movement. Look for a news event in that industry or in the stock itself to come out. All right, what else can you do if you don't want to trade options? I'm going to give you a few people to follow, but you have to know how they trade. Okay, there was a news event. A few people were on CEI last week, and it was at 66 cents. It went up to 95 cents in one day. Okay, so it put in a 50% move in a couple hours. If you have a $500 account, you buy 500 shares, you get a 20 cent move out of it, you sell it all, you made $100. Okay, but you need this kind of a move. And you need to know about the stock. And you need to be prepared that that cash is going to take two days to settle, so you can't do anything for two days. All right, but a lot of these plays are buy and holds. Okay, Zach Morris and Ripster, they not, well, more about Zach in particular, these lower price stocks, this is the man to follow for these lower price stocks. Now, they're not all going to be under a dollar. Majority of them are going to be in the few dollar range. But you have to know how these people trade. If they're mentioning something here and it's 70 cents, be prepared for it to go down to 50 cents and be prepared to hold it for a couple days, weeks, or months before it gets going. All right. Zach does a hell of a lot of due diligence on these lower price stocks. So when he says something, it's going to take off. All right. You buy the dip. Okay, if you're going to chase it up here, be prepared for it to come back down. All right, you got to give these room. And when I say you have to know how they trade, you got to know how they trade. He does, Zach does phenomenal work. He is a phenomenal trader, but he can hold on to something for a while before it makes its way back up. Okay, so if it comes back down, he can add, he can add, he can add because he believes in the stock and he can believe in the stock for a long time all right so if you're going to make trades on this you have a five hundred dollar account what do you want to do in this area right here and this is where you found out about things you want to take a piece maybe 50 shares okay give it room give it time to make this move and come back down and maybe come back down some more then add 50 more shares, but you're locking up that cash that you won't be able to use 
because now if you have a cash account, there's no margin involved. You're actually using your cash to buy this. So that if you bought, say, $50 worth and $50 worth, you have $100 that's locked up in this stock that you're hoping is going to get moving. Okay, so you might need to be prepared to hold this for a while, let it come down, you might have to buy 50 more. All right, know how people trade before you jump into something. Okay, you can trade these stocks with a $500 account. You got to have the movement. You might be able to make get in soon enough where you can get out that same day, but you got to be on it. And these plays don't happen every day. It could be every couple of weeks. All right, but you have to be prepared to hold them. So there are many different ways to do this with a small account size. Still have to do homework. You still have to be prepared for what comes next in trading. All right, and so when you're trading, whether it's options or a lower price stock, you still have to have a plan. You can't just trade because you want to trade for a reason. Oh, I have a small cash account. I'm going to get an option trade and, you know, get out of it the same day that cash is going to settle. Tomorrow I can trade again. What was your reason for getting in the trade? Okay, you still have to have a reason. You still have to have a news event. You still have to read the news. You still have to understand what the news is saying. You still have to understand and map out the chart. All right, what are you looking for in the trade? Where are your profit targets? So whether you have a $500 account or a $5 million account, you still have to have a plan. You still have to have a reason for getting in and out of the trade. Count size does not matter. You should be trading the same per that account size, per the way the chart is setting up. Nothing should change. Stock's falling against you. You believe in on it? You believe in it? You have to have account and cash size to be able to add to let that thing come back up. All right. Small accounts, you got to build, you know, you got to be consistent because you shouldn't worry about profits now because with a small account, if that's all you can do, you have to be consistent first. All right. If so, if you allocate $100 for a trade, you made 20 bucks on it, that's a 20% return. Okay. Don't worry that somebody else made 2000 or 20000 on that trade and you only made 20 bucks. We all had to start somewhere. All right. Be happy with that 20 bucks. You followed a plan. You stuck to the plan. Don't think that you're going to turn that $100 trade into $1,000 that same day. Get in the trade. Get out. Let the cash settle. Move on. All right. So let's review a few things. All right. You're on awesome calls and you have 500 box, bucks. That's awesome. Okay. The fact that you're in here in this room wanting to learn is a phenomenal thing all right because like i said there are people in this room in awesome calls that don't even have accounts yet and they're trying to pick up the knowledge get a base down and then they're going to start trading all right do your scans and build that watch list that was a really simple th scan and think or swim other platforms they should be able to do that um if not Get into Thinkorswim and start scanning. All right, I've got a lot of videos on my site, how to scan. That was a very simple, I think, three parameter scan I did just to find those options for those stocks. Build a watch list, but look at the liquidity and the volume with those options. It's got to be there. All right, and then group them together. Bitcoin stocks like Mara and Riot, your weed stocks, your EV stocks, and don't forget about the SPY. Those are all Aside from SPY, lower priced, high volume stocks, and they're in separate groups by themselves. You have weed, you have EVs, you have Bitcoin. All right. Be a news hound within that group of stocks, because if you're in awesome calls, there might not be, there will be lower priced stocks on AJ's list, but they might not be high open interest and volume in the options. Okay. So, you're going to have to do some of this legwork yourself. Like I said, I'm not sugarcoating anything. I'm not saying you're going to turn $500 into $5,000 in one month. All right. Singles up the middle. Build the account. Get consistent with it. There are ways to do this. 
Look for the news events with those stocks because that gives us the range and makes the premium or lets the premiums move. All right, that's what we need. Cash account, your options settle the next day, you're good to go. All right, think about the math. Do the cash math about how much you can trade for the day, then you're done, then you have to wait for the next day. Okay, but you can make 20 trades a week with a $500 account. You gotta do it with a cash account though. All right, watch your option premiums. Follow AJ Trader. This is awesome calls. This is the news stuff. At Mark Moses 777 options course. Okay, a lot of these are higher price stocks. You might not be able to afford to get into it now. He does a lot of work using AJ's price targets. Doing a phenomenal job. Zach Morse. Follow this gentleman for the lower price stocks, but you have to know how he trades. Okay. Ripster 47 puts a lot of information out there about methods and tutorials, but you have to learn how both of them trade. Okay, we all do something a little bit differently. We don't try to step on each other's toes, but you have to find something that works. On my site, I do have some free information also. Uh, day trading setups, uh, developing your trading method. I have a video course also sometime later if you want to see how I trade. I mainly i am following the trend with momentum, looking for areas to get in on within that trend. Okay, learn how they trade, but you still have to develop a plan. Okay. You still have to have a reason for getting in the stock. You shouldn't be trading just because you have a $500 account and you can make an option trade or two or three for that day. You have to have a reason to get in the trade. Okay, gotta have a method. Where am I going to get in? Where am I going to get out? Don't worry about profits yet. You got to build consistency. All right? You have to have a reason to get in the trade and you have to have a method to make that trade and manage that trade. Lots to do. It's a $500 account. You're going to be surprised. There's just as much work to do with a $500 account as there is a $5 million account. Okay. You might have to worry about which car to buy with a $500 account, but your method, your reasoning, should still be very similar per your account size. Does not matter. Build consistency. And along with all that, trade smart. Okay, no gunslinging. You buy a $50 option, you're thinking it's going to go to 500 because somebody said something on Twitter or whatnot. Good luck with that. Okay. Follow the real news. Follow the chart. Put something together. Put it together. Put a plan together and build on that. There's ways to do this with a small account. Okay, Don't let a hundred dollar stock scare you away. Look at the options. There's a way to do this. There's a lot to do that I have not covered in this about how to trade options, about how they move, how they work. All right, watch that video that I mentioned at the beginning. A lot of information there. Okay, A lot of how you can do this in Thinkorswim about mapping the price of the options. That's in there also about watching the option premiums move with the stock. So hopefully I'm hoping this uh, some of this stuff uh, helps you guys out. Doesn't matter about your account size. All right. Follow these people. Okay. Learn how they trade. Lots of information there. And that's free. Okay. Go to the blog with awesome calls. Check the blog. It's a great resource to trade from. And look for some of those lower price stocks and go to your option chain and see if some of these might have had lower priced options in here. Apps, probably. I'm sure it did. Uh, Stone Container, may have. All right. It's a great resource. All right. And don't let the higher price scare you off. If it's a $150 stock, it could still have options priced at, you know, $60 or $70. Lots of things to look at. Lots of resources to go over. Last thing to do, as always, trade smart. I hope this helped some people out. Feel free to contact me. See you early Tuesday. Have a good day off tomorrow.